Police Minister Pekitale has revealed that more than 21,000 police officers have been infected with COVID-19. He was speaking in KwaZulu Natal earlier. Karinda Jagmohan was there and she joins me now live. Karinda, thank you so much for your time. The police minister took a very hard line to those that will be infringing in all those COVID-19 regulations. Talk to us a little bit more about uh, what he's had to say and particularly about 21,000 of these police officers who uh, were infected with the COVID-19 uh, virus. Indeed, good afternoon to you, Anati. Well, he said that uh, 21,161 police officers have been infected with COVID-19. 330 police officers have died from this virus. Now, this is according to the police minister and his team who was speaking to us in Kwamashu uh, today. He started off with um, a oversight visit at the Princess Magogo Stadium in Kwamashu, where he spoke to a group of policemen and through them telling the rest of South African police service officials um, that they need to take a firm stance going forward as the country is now again in lockdown level three. And this time, uh, mask wearing is mandatory. And so from that point throughout the day, uh, the police minister going with officials through uh, Guamashu to various malls in the area, the operations began with one person being arrested uh, because he had ventured out without wearing a mask. And he's either they're going to face a fine or imprisonment he was taken into police custody and then of course we saw various police vehicles being stopped as well they were transporting alcohol those drivers having many reasons as to why they had alcohol in the car but the bottom line was that the transportation sale uh, and uh, consuming of alcohol in public spaces is not allowed it's prohibited and then taking action on those motorists but what we see here really is that while frontline workers in terms of um, healthcare workers are battling on the front line of this COVID-19 pandemic. The police now need to step in, of course, to ensure that they uh, are monitoring citizens and ensuring that they are complying with safety measures. And it, it, it is these police officers that need to go out into the streets where people are not wearing masks to, of course, approach them ask them where their masks are and if there is no uh, proper really communication in that regard make further arrests as per what the president said in his speech on monday that mask wearing is mandatory so that is what we are seeing now really is that police are also the uh frontline soldiers in this uh pandemic and also um while speaking to the police minister, he was telling us that there needs to be more integration from law enforcement authorities as a whole. He is apparently in talks with the um, defense minister now to see how the SANDF can be incorporated in terms of the operations during the lockdown. This is particular in areas where there are hot spots and areas where people are not necessarily abiding by those regulations. He did give an example and we did see those videos coming out of Gauteng at the two taverns, one in Alexandra, the other in Mamalodi, where on Monday evening, while the president delivering a very tearful address announcing the new restrictions because of this wave of COVID-19 cases. Uh, that address playing out at a tavern in Gauteng where people were simply not abiding by measures at all. It was business as usual and even more so. We understand that two tavern owners have been arrested and the minister of course saying that going forward he is hoping that when it comes to um, the justice process that uh, uh, the licenses um, of those uh, owners of the taverns are impacted as well. He says they shouldn't be allowed to trade further because they put um, their uh, patrons' lives in danger. And so this is what we are seeing now. Police really taking a firm stance as they head out into operations because this is generally, traditionally over the past years has been a time of togetherness but this has to change now. But not many people are realizing that, and that's why they, they're taking that firm stance. So for over the past uh, days, the police minister has been here in KwaZulu Natal. We have the most number of active cases, and we are, as a country, seeing more deaths as well as we uh, go through the second wave. And so that operations are continuing here in KZN. Tomorrow, the last day of the year, we're going to see more operations in KZN, um, and this because it is expected that not not everyone is going to abide by regulations and so it's time to clamp down on that um, and so again as we see more and more police officials being infected with this virus it's really because they're approaching people on the street 
who are not necessarily abiding by the safety measures. And another uh, point that the minister raised in his address to the police contingent was a reminder of the other pandemic the country is facing, that is gender-based violence, saying that cannot be forgotten, giving a reminder to police officials that when a woman approaches police stations, to ask for help, uh, she must not be sent back to say that she should resolve the situation on her own. The police minister giving this line that um, police officials are not negotiators, they should be arrested, saying that they need to look into this woman's case or this person, the complainant's case, investigate and then make arrests. And giving the example that a woman is kept is sent home once and then she comes to the police station again with the same complaint and is sent home by those police officials who say you need to resolve this she may not come the third time because it may be too late at that point so that's another um, issue that the minister raises that while we are clamping down hard on crime on people who are not abiding by regulations gender-based violence issues must not be forgotten as we go into 2021. And of course, that is a very important point in terms of the gender-based violence, Corinda, because you will recall in lockdown level five, uh, initially in, you know, in the beginning of this pandemic, that we saw an increase in those cases of gender-based violence. So I understand where the minister is coming from in as far as addressing that with the police. Are we likely to see a change, though, given the fact that these numbers are still high and that this is not the first time that the police minister has come out hard? and strongly against a gender-based violence and, you know, in terms of addressing this matter also to the SAPS? No, I'd love to say that we were likely to see a change, but at this time when people are again confined to their homes, we aren't really sure about the stats of gender-based violence cases. Even when we are in a hard lockdown, lockdown level five, we were told by social uh, community workers that um, many times domestic violence, gender-based violence happens um, in the confinement of one's own homes and not everyone is going to police stations to report it. Many times it's hidden, it's happening in the homes where family members are present and it's not spoken about. So at this time, it's not only the police um, authorities that need to take action, but we also need to look to our social development partners and their team as well to see how, as a whole, as community members, we can find the root cause of why exactly it is that women, young children are falling victim to gender-based violence and to what we are seeing over this past year, over the, the year before this. We have seen so many court cases where uh, men coming to court arrested for murder, arrested for rape, and this is of women that they knew that they were supposed to protect. So I don't know if there will ever be change that we're going to see over the next year and the new year. But at this point, what the message we are seeing is we do expect gender-based violence to happen. And so the law enforcement authorities that are responsible for clamping down on this need to come to the fore. They can't be sending women home at this time. They need to make sure that women are taken out of abusive households or really any complainant that is facing abuse is taken out of that situation and put into a place of safety. And then of course, community workers, social development departments, finding the root cause of this and addressing those issues. We've seen dialogues with males, we've seen um, dialogues even with various liquor, liquor authorities going to taverns to speak to about gender-based violence to patrons there. And so it's, it's up to, to really those type of, types of entities to start addressing the root causes and, and ultimately end the scourge. No, absolutely, indeed, um, Karinda, I agree with you there. Now, in as far as um, just basically what the minister also said during his address to police members, he was also at pains to address the um, hospitality industry, saying that he knows that a lot of restaurants are infringing on that alcohol ban and that he will come down hard on those that infringe. What is the situation in as far as restaurants in, uh, in KwaZulu-Natal is concerned? Because we've seen a decrease in the number of eateries that are opened in Gauteng as an example since the president announced that curfew um, time you know to 8 p.m. and also um, banning alcohol sales. Hmm. In fact, I must just point out that one of the examples that the police minister said is that he found some restaurants are serving alcohol and teapots and so he says that police officers need to go to restaurants to, to really investigate how they are carrying out those businesses. Now, it's unclear whether that's a desperation to really, um, you know, continue with their business or simply 
disregarding these rules may be a matter of both. But going forward, though, I can tell you that in KwaZulu-Natal, as with the rest of the country, the tourism, hospitality industry, restaurants included, are suffering under the weight of the new restrictions because alcohol does contribute towards their profit, especially during this time. Festive season has always been about enjoying oneself, enjoying the season as well. Alcohol plays a role in that for adults. And so uh, in, in terms of restaurants, when that sort of atmosphere was, would be expected, we're not really seeing that. Um, and especially because of the second wave of COVID-19, people themselves afraid of going out, wanting to stay at home uh, to safeguard themselves. So many South Africans already infected with this virus. So the, the industry that enjoys this time of the year, that profits this time of the year, especially in KZN, which has been a holiday destination is suffering under the weight of this. For some, they say they accept the regulations and are trying to find a way around it. Others, for example, you know, we were in Guamashu and a, a man of the street approached us to say, can you please take us to the minister? We want to tell him to start selling alcohol again because he could not make it without without alcohol. So it's it's really on both sides um, and how people are managing with this. However, going forward though, uh, come January 15th, and what the minister reminded is that will be a, the day when cabinet will take this um, this matter of rest, of the new restrictions on review. This will include. Um, really our health professionals looking into the number of COVID-19 cases we are seeing, whether the second wave is still grappling, uh, the country is still grappling with the second wave and we're seeing more hotspots emanate, or um, is there a curve that we are seeing? And on those, uh, on that information, they will then make a decision on whether this lockdown will increase, whether we'll see a harder lockdown, or whether we'll see some reprieve and some relief that will help the industries uh, try and come out of this again. But ultimately now, it's, it's up to business to be more innovative. Indeed, that's a very good point, Corinda, because the 15th of January is not necessarily when this uh, level three lockdown will end. It's more of a, an opportunity for cabinet to reconvene and re uh, review uh, the matter and take so certain considerations into that review. Um, just very quickly as, as, a, as a last question and as we wrap up this, co this conversation. Now, going back to the safety of police officers, 21,000 of them um, having been infected with COVID-19. You've spent quite a bit of time with them today. Are you seeing that they are taking care, um, you know, in terms of social distancing, wearing of masks? And also, you spoke to the minister. Is he worried about um, his members? Of course, he's worried about his members. That's really what we are seeing there is firstly him um, conveying concern about the safety of their members. We did see the social distancing mask wearing um, by police officers. That is, of course, in the presence of the police minister. We do need to go out to see whether or not they'll be continue complying here in our workspace, actually, where uh, the News from Africa case and team is based. We often see police vans coming in and out because they have their officers here as well. So we do see them complying there as well even when the minister is not present. Of course, at this time, though, you know, everyone, all South Africans are really afraid of the second wave of COVID-19 because even the president mentioned much earlier that at this point, all of us either know someone who's been infected with COVID-19, have been infected with COVID-19, we know someone who's died because of this virus. So as we see the second wave really take over the country, um, it's really up to each South African to take care of themselves. Uh, you know, I must say that we also over the past week have been speaking to various people within the healthcare industry, paramedics and security teams who conveyed concern about the lack of hospital uh, bed space that, that hospitals are filling up. They say oxygen tanks are becoming less available as well. And this is a cause for concern saying ultimately just stay at home because you really don't want to be in a position where you need health care, but you can't access it. Absolutely. Corinda, thank you so much for your time and that analysis and update.